Hello and welcome to the WB Mason Coaches Report on GoHofter.com. I'm Jim Sheehan, joined today by Hofter Pride Wrestling Coach Rob Onspot. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. Uh, happy holidays, first of all. And, thank you, uh, same to you. Thank you. And the Pride, out in Las Vegas this past weekend for the 32nd annual Cliff Keen Las Vegas Invitational. Uh, the Pride finishing 14th out of 33 teams. Uh, your assessment of the tournament? Yeah, it was a it was a good tournament. Uh, obviously, a lot of great teams out there: Oklahoma, Nebraska, Virginia Tech, Ohio State, Cornell. So uh, we were we wanted to get into uh, some tournaments where we would challenge our guys, uh, let them feel what it'd be like to be at the national tournament or a conference tournament. And I think this was a great representation of uh, of our conference and, and uh, what the national tournament will be like. Getting right to it, the ten wrestlers, eight of the ten had at least two victories. Uh, Luke Veit placing fourth at 141, Joe Booth finishing seventh mm -hmm. at uh, 165. Uh, your comments about those two? Yeah, I thought you know Luke was doing a good job. Uh, you know, I, I would think that things are a little disappointing is that he lost twice to the kid from Oklahoma who he had beaten earlier in the year. Um, you know, so we we got to go back and review the tape and, and figure out what went wrong from these two matches compared to the match that we out in Oklahoma where he just looked so dominant in that match. Uh, overall, though, the matches I saw him wrestle on, he, he was controlling the pace, he was controlling the ties, um, and, and just really doing a good job. You know, Joe, I thought, you know, wrestled well. His quarterfinal match uh, was a match I felt he should have won. I, I don't think he was aggressive enough. And then he just took a bad shot in, uh, in overtime, and uh, he, he rushed it and got extended and, and, and gave up a go behind. I think uh, his next loss to uh, Palacio from Cornell, who he had beaten in the New York States, I, I don't want to say it's a good loss. Uh, because, uh, you know, I don't know if there really are good losses, but it was a match where, you know, we, we come out of that match knowing we're the better wrestler. The scoreboard didn't show it, but he made two costly mistakes and gave up nine points in two situations. But if you look at all the positives, he had five takedowns to one. Completely dominated the match. We just got to wrestle a little bit smarter. We had the match one, and, you know, I applaud his aggressiveness. We're up by two points with, like, 30 seconds left, and he's trying to get more points. He's trying to turn them, and he it ended up getting out of position, giving up a four-point move, and that really was the, out, the difference in that match. But, uh, again, you know, it, it's hard to fault somebody that's being so aggressive and trying to score points. Now, we had four wrestlers in the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. Three of the four wrestled Oklahoma wrestlers, which we faced a couple of weeks ago. And if Cody Rogerello would advance to the quarterfinals, he would have Kendrick Maple. So, <laughs> this is not like a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely s s shaping up to be a uh, Hofstra Oklahoma dual meet all over again. But, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, I think it comes down to it says a lot about Oklahoma's team, and I think it says a lot about us. When you're, start, when you're having eight guys in the championship rounds, there's only eight guys in the quarterfinals, and, and we're matching up with Oklahoma three times, um, you know, it just says our guys are, are doing the right things because that's who they're, they're running into. Those are the guys we want to go out there and wrestle. We don't fly out to Las Vegas to wrestle uh, Menlo and, and San Francisco State and stuff like that. We go out there to wrestle Oklahoma and Ohio State and Cornell. So it's great that we, we matched up to them uh, four or three times. It would have been even better to get a couple wins. And you mentioned earlier Joe Booth losing in the quarterfinals to uh, Cooper Moore from Northern Iowa. Uh, were you disappointed in any of the weight classes? I think, you know, again, I, I was doing a lot of uh, watching scores and stuff without not being out there, um, and I haven't had, I got to talk to my assistants a little bit about it. You know, I, I don't know if disappoint is the word. Uh, we just need to get better. You know, we need to get better at some weight classes, and we need to, you know, take this as a learning experience and, and not beat them up over some of the weight classes where we didn't perform to maybe where we should have. Uh, there's definitely some matches when I look and I'm, i got to kind of scratch my head and be like, you know what, that was a match we should have never lost. And, and we can go one of two ways from that. We can just absolutely get all over them and, and kind of crush their confidence, or we can try and figure out what we need to do to get them wrestling better. Um, and I think we're going to take the latter approach. And you've got another tournament, your third tournament, New York State. Cliff Keen now coming up uh, January 1st and 2nd, the Southern Scuffle down at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. And that is a loaded field, uh, Penn State, Oklahoma State, Minnesota, Cornell, Missouri, Oregon State, Iowa State, Pittsburgh, all in the top 25 this past week. That's Yeah, it's the, the Southern Scuffle has really kind of taken over as the premier tournament uh, in the country. Uh, it, it is basically a mini national tournament in January. So we're going to go down there and, you know, going to see some great competition. 
And again, it, it's, you know, we're putting our guys, we're giving them some opportunities to see the best competition. We're giving the guys the opportunity to go out there and knock off some top guys and write their ticket to the national tournament, get ranked, you know, beat a couple. You place in the Southern Scuffle, yeah, you can place a national. It's that good of a tournament. So, uh, you know, we will, we'll work on what we need to work on. We'll have a little break over the holidays, and, and when we come back, we're going to get on a plane and get ready to go. And, again, it's just, you know, you got to be excited to go into tournaments with Penn State, Oklahoma State, Minnesota, um, Cornell, Missouri, Oregon State. Those are the teams you want to be associated with, and that's why we put our team in there. Now, are you ready for semester exams now, which begin next week? Uh, then you have a little bit of break. Are you concerned about the break? There's always a lot of things that can happen. Over there, this there's, there's a lot of things that can happen. You know, I, I think our guys are mature enough to handle themselves over the, over the break. I think they want to win bad enough or they'll be disciplined enough and, and keep doing the right things. Um, you know, I, I do like the fact that we, we had a tournament. Uh, we'll come back. We'll, we'll evaluate what we're doing at each individual weight class. We'll talk about the things we need to improve on. And we get a little break. The guys get a little break. They can recharge the battery a little bit, the mind, the body. Uh, right now we are a little banged up, so it's this break's coming at a good time where we can stay on the mats and we can just kind of pull back a little bit, let guys get healthy mentally and physically, and then make it ready to go for that long intercession and that big hard push for the end of the year. Well, good luck uh, to your team on final exams, and uh, good luck in the Southern Scuffle. And we'll talk to you after the holidays, and a special holiday for you. And uh, we'll see you again right after the Christmas holidays, New Year's holidays, right here on WB Mason Coaches Report on GoHofter.com.